To best address the issues surrounding anti-theism, I should first acknowledge the complications that result from the combination of language limitations and the human brain's evident desire to oversimplify and categorize items in the world around it. I consider labels a necessary evil of communication. Without them, the world becomes void of details, distinctions, and descriptive order. It would be like cramming every file on your computer onto the desktop rather than using folders. With labels, however, comes a tendency for our brains to haplessly file some labeled items into a single folder without carefully considering just how many that item could and should be copied into, or if we really chose the correct folder for it to begin with. The issue becomes more complex when the items being labeled are people with complicated minds and personalities of their own. It's convoluted further still in the many cases when labels are poorly coined and some people to whom a label technically applies prefer to label themselves by a label that represents something else or by one of their own creation that they consider more accurate. For example, the label feminist carries a barrage of connotative baggage. I am technically a feminist because I advocate for gender equality in terms of legal, political, social, and economic rights. I don't like the term feminist, however, because it sounds more like an appropriate name for a fringe group that wants women above men rather than equal to them. I understand this be is because historically women are the gender that needs elevation for equality to occur, but I think it makes as much sense semantically as it would for someone who wants equality among ethnicities to be labeled a dark skinnist. Anyway, technically a group promoting women's rights above those of men would not be feminist because gender superiority is the opposite of gender equality, which the feminist movement is technically about. But I'm talking about connotation here, meaning the baggage that comes with a word. I therefore label myself as an equalist because it makes more sense to me. Even though it's a made-up term, if I tell you that I'm an equalist regarding how gender should be treated, you don't need further explanation. Adversely, calling myself a feminist requires a descriptive follow-up to outline the nuances of my position. People develop personal connotations with emotional roots in their brains regarding strong issues like that, and often they will quickly categorize you by your label into a completely inappropriate mental file based on their interpretations and experience with the label you wear. Feminism is far from being the only label with this problem. Many atheists, such as Neil Tyson, refuse to accurately accept the label of atheist because they don't understand what it actually means and or don't want other people to associate them with the unmerited baggage that comes with such a term. With sensitive issues like religion and politics, these labels become easily sensationalized in terms of connotation. So many lay people think agnostic means what atheist actually means. They think atheist is what anti-theist actually means, and they think an anti-theist is actually the non-believer equivalent to a fundamentalist suicide bomber. I am technically an anti-theist because I consider modern religion to be an obsolete practice of utter nonsense that does far more harm than good. For the same reason I would speak out against institutions making millions of dollars from selling placebo pills to gullible trusting patients, I voice my disappointment for still living in a culture that worships fairy tales and mysticism while happily charging the worshippers. I technically am an anti-theist for the above mentioned reasons and more, but I don't enjoy the label of anti-theist because of the inappropriate baggage it carries. The very word suggests that as one I must be against theists themselves, that I must have a personal beef with those people themselves, and that I wish them to simply vanish or go away. I would be more appropriately called an person who is anti-theism because it's the concept of their obsolete worship that I think is holding society back, not them as holistic people. Lady Tiger Lily recently posted a short video series about her problems with some anti-theists, which I'll link below. In it, she expressed her disgust when such people say that anti-theism isn't a hatred of religious people so much as it is a stance against religion itself, because to her that sounds the same as religious anti-gay people claiming to hate the sinner and not the sin. There are some important differences to acknowledge. Religious activism grows from a faith-based premise which requires argument to justify. My position against religion doesn't involve me stripping any people of their rights to worship, and I don't use dogmatic ancient literature to support my stance. One's sexual orientation is not up for debate. And the hate of the sin, not the sinner crowd is usually out to remove the rights of other people based on instructions from their holy books, even though those people's sexual activities harm them in no way whatsoever.
Labeling makes things a bit more complicated in spots like this. The vast majority of my family and friends are religious people. While on YouTube it may appear as though the atheist community only has a few token Christian friends, in reality, for most of us, it's quite the opposite. Even though I'm technically an anti-theist, my mind is capable of separating a person's theism from the rest of his or her entire personality. I'm not foolish enough to drop people into the theist folder on my mental desktop and write them off as unintelligent or altogether worthy of nothing but a click, drag, and drop into the recycling bin. I can consider someone to be completely demonstrably irrational when it comes to one or two subjects such as religion and still understand that outside of such issues he or she may still be an intelligent, rational, moral person. In fact, for most theists I know, that's the case. It's called doublethink and it's fairly common. If I say it's stupid to believe in talking snakes, the Noah story, or creationism, it doesn't mean I think all people who subscribe to those beliefs are equally stupid about their every conclusion on anything they've ever thought about. And just as there are fringe groups of theists, there are plenty of overly zealous anti-theists who proudly slide their way right past their boundaries and comfortably into the asshole territory by failing to make those of distinctions. If you're an atheist who treats all theists that way, cut that shit out. It's stupid and you're as embarrassing to most atheists as the Westboro Baptist Church is to most Christians. One faction who tends to produce such people is the recently deconverted. Tiger Lily addresses this when describing what she calls fluff bunnies. The newly deconverted are often jarred by having been so wrong for so long and desire to become outspoken advocates for atheism, which is fine. The problem occurs when they frequently feel and act upon that urge before taking the time to really explore the arguments, evaluate some of these nuances about overall personality and mental complexity mentioned here. It's important to draw distinctions between people of different religions, different denominations within those religions, different interpretations within those denominations, and levels of conviction within those interpretations. This isn't nearly as easy for our brains to do or for us to linguistically acknowledge in the course of argument, but it's always worth doing. And I'll be the first to admit it's a worthwhile effort I've made the mistake of not taking the time to exert. Tiger Lily complained of anti-theists who mock people for religious traditions and she insisted that they can still be practiced for the sake of culture and or respect rather than to actually worship the entities those superstitions were invented to appease. This is certainly true. My uncle still proudly displays carefully crafted jack-o'-lanterns every October, but he doesn't do it to ward off evil spirits. Personally, I find tradition alone to be a fairly poor reason to do anything, and I'm not swayed any more by cultural tradition than I am by any other form of We've been doing this forever, so we best keep doing it. However, if it isn't harmful to anyone else, people aren't telling supernatural lies to vulnerable children, and they aren't forcing the customs that they enjoy on me, I don't see any problem with non-religious or religious people participating in cultural or familial traditions, whether they hold religious origins or not. An area I disagree with Tiger Lily on is her claim that to go into a religious person's household for dinner and not bow for prayer while they say grace is extraordinarily offensive. To be clear and fair, her phrasing only acknowledged the only anti-theistic alternative to not joining in family grace as claiming that you couldn't eat with them because them saying grace forced their religion upon you. Gray area between joining the prayer and throwing a fit certainly exists, and I live in it. If a religious family invites me over for dinner and they want to say grace, they can. I'm not going to join them. I'm going to sit quietly with my head up and wait for them to finish. If they tell me I'm required to pray with them, lest they be insulted, I'll politely dismiss myself from their home. I would find it more insulting for their religion and for my personal convictions to insist that I pretend to pray than it would be for me to simply sit politely and wait. Likewise, if religious friends of mine come to eat at my house, I'm not going to forbid them from praying at my table because I consider it extremely offensive to bring prayer into my home. None of these issues are as simplistic and black and white as most of our brains would prefer them to be. While I consider modern religion to be an obsolete institution that will eventually go the way of religions before it, I don't see it happening in my lifetime. That means that, for now, we have to share the planet with each other, which should include learning from one another. I have no trouble hearing cogent arguments that explain how my way of thinking is incorrect, provided I'm permitted the opportunity to respond and defend myself. 
What I won't tolerate is other people insisting that my disbelief is going to ensure me an eternal place in a lake of fire, or to live my next life as a subhuman creature, or that I deserve to have my head smashed with a rock and swim in a river of blood while I'm stoned. At the very least, I'm not going to accept being called offensive for looking upon those who confidently claim such things about me and calling them on their bullshit. Now in doing so, however, I am clearly responsible for drawing distinctions between religions, denominations, interpretations, and level of extremity, even if that isn't easy.